Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to take this Angular 7.x project and turn it into an 8.x project. So to start with, the easiest way to do that is by using the CLI and ng upgrade. But it's not as simple as that. There are some other changes and things to keep in mind. So while the process changing from 7 to 8 is easy, there are some things that we need to maybe be concerned about. So I'm going to get rid of this ng sub and inside of the terminal now, we're going to use ng update. ng update on at angular slash CLI and at angular slash core. This will go ahead and update our project to use 8.x for both the CLI core and everything else. As you can see here on screen, we have a material project. So we are going to be updating material to version eight as well. And we're going to be discussing things like how lazy loading has changed, the differences between view child and content child for 8.x, as well as some potential changes with TypeScript 3.4. At this time, you'll most likely be asked by the CLI whether you want to opt in to essentially share your usage data, of course, anonymously. You can either select yes or no to that. And I find that this upgrade process does take about two to three minutes to make sure that everything has installed. So it would be a good time to go get a coffee or check out the subscribe button and the notifications bell on the channel. Okay, so once this has finished, we can see in the terminal that things have changed. So we have this static query migration and that looks at the changes in Angular 8 for view child and content child queries. You can see the guide for this right here. We are gonna discuss this inside of the video too, but it's just for your sort of understanding. Next, we have changes to app component. That's essentially just changing the way that view child works. So if we look inside of app component, you can see it's added this static true for our view child. There's also changes and updates to the browser list as well as tslint and tsconfig. The primary changes to tsconfig, if we just remove the Zen mode for now and we have a look at our git diff for tsconfig, we can see it now uses this es next and this ES2015 target. So this target change essentially allows us to use differential loading, and that's why we can load the modern bundle on a modern browser and a sort of legacy bundle on a legacy browser. And the way that that works, essentially we have a script and we'd have the type equals to module, and this would be our sort of modern browser. And we might have a source to equal to something, but Angular would of course handle that. But on a sort of legacy browser, it won't understand if this type equals module. So as a result, we can load a no module, and that just allows the sort of modern browsers to determine that this is an old build, and that will be the source, but this would be for, of course, the legacy version of our bundle. So the use of this differential loading allows us to, of course, shave off some bundle size where we're wasting time transpiling sort of code that a modern browser would already understand. So if we look at the other changes, we can see things like app routing module. So traditionally inside of an Angular application, we would do load children and we'd have this string. The string would point towards a particular module. We'd use this hash symbol for the module name. Now in Angular 8.x, we're using this dynamic loading syntax, and this is sort of standardized, and as a result, we are gonna use it in 8.x and above. The previous syntax has been deprecated, and it's very simple. All you have is this sort of new anonymous function that imports a particular module. Then we get that as a promise that gives us the module inside of this M, and then of course we can set that to m dot and then whatever module that we want. So that'll return us that module. An example would be right now, this is called lazy module. It's got nothing to do with the fact that we are lazy loading the module. This could be called contacts module, the canvas module or any other sort of module name. It isn't tied to the fact that this is a lazy loaded module. So ng upgrade is gonna do this automatically for you on your load children aspects, but you will need to do this manually by default for future modules.
Next, we have this static equals true. So if we look at the static query migration guide that's on the Angular documentation, this is related to the way that change detection works at any particular time. So when it comes to results being available on ng on init versus ng after view init, that's gonna determine based on the static property and of course the element that we're trying to query. So as an example, our app nav bar is a static query because we know when to run change detection and we know exactly when we have access to that element. But if we have something like ng if equals show title, well, at this stage, it's no longer a static query. It's a dynamic query because this may or may not be different by the time we come to actually get the query result. So if they are dynamic, for example, we have an ng4 and ng if, then it's not a static property. So we should say static false. If they aren't dynamic, then we should say static true. So right now we have to specify static false, and this is the default. But in version nine, as we can see here, view child and content child are sort of changing. And as a result, it will be static false as the default. This static false will be removed by ng update when it comes to, of course, updating to Angular 9. But for it, we will need to add that. If you are running into any TypeScript problems on the update, I would check out the TypeScript 3.4 changelog. You can see what exactly has changed in this version and the way that maybe types are different for you. Next up, let's update our material module to be version eight. So right now, if we're like in our package.json, although we had sort of material in our project, it didn't get updated by default with ng update. So we will need to do that again. And we can say ng update at angular slash material. And once we do that, it will go ahead and update the version of the CDK material and there are some changes in the way that we import modules from material. So let's take a look at that. So once again, after running the command, we can see inside of the terminal, the things that have changed. This is the dependency for material now is 8.0 and CDK just as well, 8.02. It also makes some migrations for the CDK and material. So the circumstances that have changed for us in material, if we go to our material module, is that we are now importing from Angular material button and Angular material toolbar. So before it was just a barrel import inside of Angular material. Now it actually imports from material button toolbar and everything else. So you'll have to make sure that you structure your application in such a way when you're importing from material that you do it by importing the folder itself for the feature. For example, in this circumstance button, in the other circumstance toolbar. And by the end of this, we should now have an Angular project that is running version 8.0 for both Angular itself and of course for Angular material. So I hope you found this guide useful and you don't run into too many issues when upgrading to Angular 8. If you have found it useful, I'd love if you hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more content. I have lots more content on the way, including a full Angular course that I'm offering for free here on YouTube. So I would love it if you did hit that subscribe button and notifications bell. Until next time, I'll see you in the comments. Bye.